Hi, and welcome to another Magnus Carlsen game from the 2014 World Rapid Championship. Uh, this is the third round. Uh, Magnus drew in the second round. He had the black pieces against Gadir Kuzenov uh, from Azerbaijan. And, yeah, looked to be winning at some point, but uh, Kuzenov defended quite well. So here in the third round, he had the white pieces again, this time against the Russian Grandmaster Radimir Potkin. So let's see what transpired. Uh, he went for e4 this time. In round one, he played pawn to d4. And we had the, uh, the hanging pawns in the endgame against Kirill Georgiev. So Vladimir goes for the Sicilian. d4, c takes uh, c6. Uh, the timing of or the or, or the Paulson, um, this is seven, and we should we should note, note that uh, for these rapid games, of course, there's not much time to uh, do any preparation for the game. So most often, uh, players are maybe selecting, you know, slightly offbeat variations that they usually wouldn't play, just to avoid any any lines that your opponent knows too well. Uh, bishop e3, a6, a3, and yeah, here we see this kind of worry issue, not that common with a3 and f4, but we get an interesting position nonetheless. Uh, black could play d6 here as well, which is a standard Sicilian move, something like this. Uh, but of course, white is uh, aggressively placed, maybe uh, more like queen f3. Could be played, uh, but black went for a di different uh, a different route here. He took on d4, and quite often we see uh, black trying to utilize that he has played d6 and do something with his bishop here. In this case, uh, the bishop came to the rescue with uh, bishop d6. I don't think uh, black can take. Seems like white should get a nice uh, space advantage if you take. If you can, we'll play e5, knight e4, long castles. Black has to be careful. You know, this could become a bad piece. We can't allow this kind of bite here with, with castles, etc. So he would sort of probably have to play d6. And it seems like white can build up a little bit, something like this. Okay, perhaps slightly better for white. But instead of taking, uh, Vladimir Potkin went bishop to d6. Magnus answers, answers with e5. And now black has to more or less take on e3, otherwise he has simply lost time if he takes on, on b6. Uh, then compared to the uh, variation where you took immediately, now you have lost a move. White has already went to e5, and now you have to make another move with the bishop, so you kind of lose, lose, uh, you lose two moves. We can't do that in chess at any level. So knight takes e3, queen takes and bishop e7. So okay, black has the bishop pair, but white does have a nice square for his knight, where he can maybe jump to d6 and an aggressive square for the bishop on d3. White castle queenside, and now he's ready for knight e4 to d6. b5, knight e4. And yeah, here it's probably risky to allow knight d6 with check. If you, let's say we go, uh, I don't know what you know what to do here. It should be seven. Here we would probably have to, have to move the king because if, if we take what just as a big point, we might even be able to take with a pawn. But this looks, you know, quite good. We got triple or you know quadruple. <laughs> if that was possible on default. White has a nice advantage, it seems, so he castled bishop d3, bishop to b7, and now an aggressive move from, from Magnus. Pause your video and think about White's options here. He went knight f6, and this kind of move, of course, you can't make without Calculating here, we're sacrificing a piece if he takes with a pawn, but that's not what happened. He actually took with uh, the bishop, 
Let's see what happens if you attack into the pawn. Okay, first of all, uh, if Magnus had calculated that something like this, king takes queen h3, king g7, queen g4, king h8, etc. If he had calculated that this isn't working, then he actually has another option. Instead of bishop takes h7, we can play queen g3 check, king must move, queen h4 threatening mate, uh, so queen, so a5, and now we take on e7, we regain the piece, and black is a bit weak on the black squares and the rockish king. So most likely white is going to be slightly better here. We can also envision a, uh, a end game where white will be able to uh, create a pass pawn on the queen side, while black's pawn will be not so mobile here on, on the king side. And of course, Magnus sells in those kind of positions, so he would have gone for this if this hadn't been working. Bishop takes h7. The thing is, if queen h3, like we just looked at, uh, king h8, here it's actually hard to uh, continue the attack. Again, if queen h4, king g7, and if you try to bring the rook, uh, we have to watch out because the bishop to e4. And this is strong because once we check, there's actually bishop h7. And here we can't uh, increase the pressure on this bishop because there's a little mate threat here on c2, which loses a vital tempo for us. So, world of hurt here for white, so he would actually have to force a draw here with rook takes h7. Followed by, uh, Perpetual check here. But fortunately, and I'm guessing Magnus saw this, after bishop takes h7, king takes, there's in fact d3 immediately. The queen, uh, the queen check on h3 is not going anywhere. So right now, the bishop for move is not possible. So rook d3, now we're ready to swing over to uh, h3 and g3. And there's actually no no way to defend against this. Let's try something with g8, simply queen h3, king g7, and mate follows like this, and queen takes. Like mate, uh, bishop takes g2, covering h3, seems to also lose quite handily, and rook g8, for instance. We could maybe just play queen h3, and <laughs> this is mid, etc. So, okay, uh, I have no doubt in my mind that Magnus saw this. He probably puck in as well, so he played bishop takes f6. Now we managed to, uh, to damage the structure for, for black here. And he has to be a bit careful. He went g6 here. Um, if we take on f6, that does not look good, does not look good at all. I have a feeling we could end the game immediately, let's say takes, it goes on like this, here, let's try and mate, uh, only way to block is here, and now I want to try this move, and check, and rook here. And well, this queen takes check. Is that an issue? Maybe, yeah, probably it's not even an issue. King b1, rook g3 next. Looks decisive. Okay, black will get some compensation. But, uh, surely it's. That's game over. Okay, there might be something better. Right? Uh, you know, we don't have to sacrifice the piece, I just was looking for a way to end the game immediately. Immediately. But yeah, either way it looks quite promising for white if you take. So he went g6. And now f5, and the plan is simple, we want to get this queen to h6. Where it will uh, be made in g7 if black is not careful. Of course at Grandmaster level they are indeed careful, so queen d8. Queen g5, white must hold on to this f6 pawn, which really clamps down on Black's defense. And here, mm, it's actually hard to do anything. Black on rook c8. Take on f5, bishop takes f5, and d7 pawn is hanging. But now, this just looks devastating. Take on d6, bishop takes. 
and queen takes f6. Maybe there was more fight in uh, rook takes f6 when this actually looks good, looks like we're winning a piece here. But perhaps after bishop takes b7, black can indeed fight on with uh, rook takes c2. This is probably what, what black should have done. Uh, probably it's still lost, let's say king b1. Uh, actually king b1 is important because we can't allow queen c7 with check, we'll get see later. Rook takes b2, now we take it. Rook f2, winning the queen. So we have to give up the queen like this. Rook takes and rook takes. So we have uh, two rooks for the queen, but we do have an extra piece. However, black can still fight here. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure it's lost for black. It's going to be really difficult to uh, coordinate the white pieces, and there might be some uh, options or possibilities of uh, a perpetual check for black. And yeah, he's not about weapons. She has kind of pass pawns here. So maybe rook takes f6 was a better option. Yeah, note that the king has to be on b2 because otherwise queen c7 would pick up the bishop. That's why I played king b1 earlier. So perhaps this was a better chance, but note also that bishop e4 is not forced. We could move this bishop back and, and then do something else, and probably white is doing much better there. Uh, so queen takes f6 was played, but this does allow bishop takes h7, king h8, if we take here then uh, rook takes on d7, this is not pretty, uh, if we interpose we take the queen, if king h8, uh, we made it, so king h8 is absolutely forced, but now queen h5, Black went with uh, king g7, but now we can take a d7. And after rook f7, uh, Magnus went to d3, he shot two pawns. And after black took the rook, simply queen h7 check. And Magnus is going to pick up the rook on d7, he's up two pawns. This is going to be game over. And indeed, Vladimir Potkin was signed here, so a nice win by Magnus. and. Yeah, I was. Uh, I read somewhere online that uh, he walked away from the playing hall with a with a smile on his face. It was, it was uh, quite a nice game. It probably gave him gave him some pleasure. So okay, uh, another Magnus game, and I will see you later with some more games from uh, day one of uh, the World Rapid Championship. See you later. Bye bye.